Hey everyone, uh, today in this uh, short video we're gonna describe how to build uh, the following. So if you look here, uh, I can draw a number, say 6, click submit, and it'll output what it believes uh, the number is, which is a 6 in this case. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get started on uh, building this. All right, let's get started. So you'll see I have my VS Code uh, open. We're gonna go over here and we'll create a new file. We'll call it mnist.ipynb. mnist will stand for the data set we're gonna use in this uh, notebook. Uh, before we get started, we have to import some packages. So the first one is gonna be Gradio as GR. Uh, this is the only one that if you use it in, uh, in Google Collab that you'll have to pip install. But other than that, everything else is good to go. Uh, the next thing we're going to have to uh, use is uh, a model, and I chose to use a model coming from Scikit-Learn, uh, multi-layer perceptron, otherwise known as a neural network. And the third thing we're going to use is uh, we're going to use Torch Vision just to download the data set, not to do anything else. So let's download the data. And we'll just call this data sets, so we can call it later. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to download is Seaborn, or the uh, download or import. Uh, and I'm going to make sure it's in dark mode uh, for Seaborn, not for Gradio. There we go. And let's get started. So it's going to take a little time. Boom, everything's done. Okay, so now we have uh, we have all our packages and we're ready to get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get my data. Uh, and GitHub Copilot knows what I want to do, so let's just do that one. And same for this one. So this is going to be the train and test set. Uh, so again, if you haven't seen MNIST, it's a bunch of basically handwritten digits. So the numbers 0 through 9 are you know contained as images in your data set and the, the labels are the actual numbers that are, were supposed to be drawn. Uh, so this is a famous data set. It's contained all over the, the web. Uh, it was kind of investigated and created by Jan LeCun back in uh, a while ago. So I, if you haven't seen it before, I'd encourage you to look into it as it's a pretty interesting uh, data set and kind of a historical, you know, very historical data set for machine learning. Okay, so it turns out to actually get to the data set, uh, you'll have to do something. So remember, we called it mnist.trainset, and then .data will actually give you the the data. And so if you look, it's a PyTorch tensor of size 60,000 by 28 by 28. So there's 60,000 training examples, and each one is 28 by 28. We could also check the rest of them. So the other thing we have to see is also the targets. Those are going to be the labels. So let's see. So again, the data is 60,000, you know, 20 by 28. For the test set, it gives you 10,000 samples. Uh, and then the labels are going to be, uh, you know, 60,000 labels. Uh, they're going to be integers between 0 and 9, and, you know, the same similar thing for the, the test. So this is the data set we'll be working with. Okay, now that that's finished running, let's uh, go ahead and convert these things to NumPy. So the way we do that with a PyTorch tensor is just put NumPy with parentheses, and we'll do the same thing for every other one, and run that. So now we have uh, NumPy, you know, arrays. Okay, so let's just take like our uh, training example and see how the entries are distributed. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is the reason why I actually imported Seaborn. So we're gonna use a hist plot, so a histogram, so the data is going to be x-train, but we're going to have to reshape it. Uh, we can just do, you know, 28 by 28 turns out to be 784 by 1. And I, I got an error because I forgot to take the first training example, and I was trying to do the whole thing at once. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can actually see that most of the entries are 0. Uh, and again, for a handwritten digit, uh, you know, this is not that surprising. Uh, let's actually go ahead and plot that one. So let's plot the first image. 
So you can see that most of them are going to be zero, and this is coming from all like the black space in the, the image. But there are some that are going to be close to what it turns out to be around 250, which is a, a pretty large number. And if you have any kind of knowledge of neural networks, you'll know that's a bit too large of a number to chuck into a neural network. So let's go ahead and kind of process the data a little bit. So for this X train, I'm going to actually uh, listen to GitHub Copilot. So that's the first thing to do is to reshape it so that instead of being 28 by 28, it's now going to be a 784 dimensional vector. And we're going to divide by 255 so that the maximum entry is one instead of, uh, you know, 255. And X test, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and train the model. So let's try that one. So I'm going to ask you have a copilot and good. So it suggests us a particular model, the multi-layer perceptron that we imported earlier. However, this model is uh, kind of big for at least for our demo purposes. So it has three hidden layers, each with 100 neurons. So let's kind of make it a little bit smaller. And let's check out this max editor. Uh, hopefully it'll train a bit quicker. And let's fit the model. So this is good. Let's uh, let's go ahead and start training. Uh, it might take some time, so I'll see you when it's done. All right, it finally finished training, so we can go ahead and uh, get moving on. So let's first uh, print uh, the accuracies. So let's ask GitHub Copilot, and indeed that's how you do it. So we got the training accuracy, uh, MLP dot score the score. Uh, method in scikit-learn actually returns the accuracy of the model uh, for the inputs and outputs, and we'll do the same thing for the test. So we'll go ahead and do that. So the training accuracy is perfect, and the testing accuracy is, uh, you know, 96% and almost 97. So, you know, it's a bit of overfitting, but, you know, not too bad for, for our first model. So now that we have a model uh, ready to go, let's actually, uh, you know, see how we how it behaves in practice so to do this the first thing we're going to do is uh create a function called predict uh, and the whole purpose of this function is to uh basically input an image and output the label uh but it has to be in a way that the gradio uh you know interface will be able to to interpret so the first thing we're going to do is reshape the image so let's see this uh, this is not quite right, so, but this, you know, GitHub Copilot is not too bad to start with. So the first thing is we're definitely going to reshape the image, so that's right. Uh, but GitHub Copilot did not scale the image, so we have to add that in ourselves. Uh, the next thing is the predict method of the multi-limit MLP. Uh, that is actually going to predict the, um, the class. And when I, but it's going to return it as a NumPy array. So it's basically going to predict a class, say if the class was seven, it would return a NumPy array, uh, you know, with the number seven inside. So that's why we have this little zero here that uh, it'll pull out the, the seven. Uh, and then we need to convert it to an integer because it turns out that NumPy will return a NumPy integer. But we, when we use the Gradio, we'll need to have an actual integer. So this is going to be the predict. So this is going to be the function, the kind of the main thing that we're going to input into the Gradio. And now we're ready to do with one line of code to create an interface, uh, like we saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, and here it is, except for we are going to add some uh, keyword arguments. So the function is going to be predict. Uh, sketchpad is going to be the inputs. So the inputs are going to be coming from a sketchpad, and the outputs are going to be a label, aka just an integer. Uh, and then the dot launch will make us ready to go. Boom, so it's ready to launch. You can see it appears in the, the notebook, but we'll go ahead and copy this URL. Uh, go to Google Chrome and click it. And we're ready to go, so let's try it. Let's put in the number four and see what happens. Boom, we got four. Let's try a zero. Boom, it's zero. 
All right, one more time. Let's do a three. It's a three. Let's try a seven. And you notice that it gets it wrong. Uh, I actually saw this before uh, messing around with this. Uh, actually, what was wrong was the seven was too big and it wasn't able to figure it out. So if I drew a smaller seven, uh, it figures it out. All right, so we finished building our full uh, machine learning pipeline where the input is a sketch of a number and the output is what the model believes the number actually is. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy playing around with this and see you in the next one.